So you want to switch your dog, cat, or ferret to a raw diet, do ya? Well, switching to a raw diet is an amazing step towards providing a diet your pet can thrive on. But the thing is, it's not so much a step as it is a jump. Switching your pet to a raw diet is a big change, not only for your pet, but for you also, especially when making homemade raw meals. But don't worry, as long as you know these three things that I'm about to tell you, raw feeding your pet can be a breeze. So right now, you might still be in the research phase and you feel super inspired. This is an amazing feeling. When I was in the beginning phase, all I wanted to do was go out, buy a bunch of raw meat and start raw feeding that day. But I'm begging you, don't do that yet. Rushing into the transition is a big mistake that new raw feeders make. Not only will a rushed transition be detrimental to your sanity, but it will also be detrimental to your pet's digestive system. I've seen countless posts by owners who tried switching their pet to raw, but after the pet started experiencing GI upset, they immediately stopped and concluded that the raw diet just wasn't right for their pet. But the reality is, their pet could have done just fine on raw. So why did their pet get sick then? Well, they either introduced too much too quickly, which shocked their pet's digestive system, or they didn't do enough research on how to properly build a raw meal and accidentally fed too much or not enough of something. Now, you don't need to scare yourself into waiting forever. You just need to give yourself some time to understand the transition process. Now, after your initial learning phase, your next step should be to search your area and see what meats and other whole foods that you can actually find. This is another place that owners get stuck. I mean, where in the world are you supposed to find pork brains and chicken hearts? In my initial search for raw parts, I thought my only option was chain grocery stores. And these places only have things like chicken breast, ground beef, chicken wings, and maybe some chicken liver if I was lucky. How are all of these raw feeders finding so many animal parts? Once I took a step back and asked around, I realized that all of the animal parts that I needed were right in front of me. Chain grocery stores are only the beginning. You should also check your local markets for any local meats or offcuts that might be sold there. International markets like Asian or Indian markets, which are a gold mine for raw feeders. Local butcher shops to see if they can get you any organ meats or offcuts. Local farmers markets to see if meat farmers can bring you any goodies. And also check online community groups for hunters in your area. No matter the country you live in, there can be many creative ways to source meats. And if you live in the US, Canada, or certain parts of Western Europe, you also have the option to get raw animal parts through raw feeding suppliers online. Now, I know, shopping around like this takes a lot of time and effort on your part. Which brings me to the next thing you should do before you start raw feeding. Make sure you're ready for the commitment. When you make homemade meals for your pet, you're making a commitment to formulate their diet for the foreseeable future. So you need to make sure you have the time and energy necessary for shopping, formulating, meal prepping, and transitioning them to this new diet. Now, I don't want to make raw feeding sound daunting because this is a very rewarding and positive change in both you and your pet's life. Building homemade meals will just take a little more work on your part. But don't worry, I'll always be here to help you along the way. So if you're a beginner and you need somewhere to start, here is my video playlist for beginners that goes over how to build and balance raw diets, how to transition your dog or cat to raw, and how to meal prep.